Hi, I'm Bruce Asia, and in this video, we're going to look at some basics for drum programming within Cubase. So I have Groove Agent SE set up here, and I've got a bass line. And I want to add some drums. I can access the sounds by playing different elements on the keyboard. What I want to do though is actually going to program it using the mouse. So I'm going to create a MIDI part by using the pencil tool, clicking on it and then dragging it out. And this is one bar in length. I select the MIDI part and I'm going to go into the MIDI drum editor, the, the drum editor within Cubase. Let's click on that and you'll see at the moment there's not much in there. But what you have down the side here is a list of MIDI notes that's the pitch as you'll actually play it, effectively expect to see it on the keyboard, and a number of drum names. Now, when you use the kits available in Cubase, you can actually have, uh, Cubase will actually automatically populate the names uh, of the kit items if you want it to. So in this case, we have kick compressed, clap electro, snare rattle, and so on. And generally, these are mapped um, in a repeatable kind of way. So very often you'll get the kick drum on that note, that C note there. And you'll get things like hats, the open eye hat on that F sharp there. This conforms to what is broadly called the general MIDI mapping for drum sounds. Um, it will vary between kits, um, but it generally is a good way of actually um, accessing the sounds. It means if you do change the kits that you will have some kind of similarity in terms of some of the sounds it might actually trigger. Um, but of course, you might end up with some others which don't necessarily conform directly to that. The useful thing here though in Cubase, you do get the names down the side. Now we have this grid, and you can see that this is one bar in length here. We have the grid is going to be set up to 16th notes. Let's check that to 16th. There we go. And you can see also that automatically you can set the snap amount for each of the parts. Um, so in this case, all of the drum sounds will snap to a 16th here. If I want to create a drum hit, what I need to do is I click on Alt, and this brings up this little drumstick tool, or I can click on the drumstick tool there. And let's start by doing something very, very straightforward and actually populating with this kind of four to the floor beat. So you can see straight away that when I actually select the individual sounds here, it will actually play the sound. It doesn't actually add anything to that particular programmed element of the track here. But what it also does, when I select one that's actually got some notes in it here, you'll actually see the velocities. So I can actually change those velocities if I want to, but I have to, have to select the right sound to do that. I can also choose these sounds by clicking on them and it will highlight them. You can set it so that when you actually choose a sound on this programming area here, it will actually play it. And you click on that little speaker icon for acoustic feedback. And now when I select it, it will actually play that sound. You don't always want it to do that, but it can be quite useful. You've got quite a busy uh, set of sounds or sort of program drum tracks. You can actually, you click on it and you actually hear what the sound is doing. And that works in other MIDI editors as well. So let's leave that on for the moment. So now let's choose something else. Let's choose a hi-hat perhaps, or maybe this percussion click. I can do it while the track's playing. I'm gonna use Alt to bring up the drum tool. See, with that acoustic feedback set to on, whilst the track's playing, it's a little bit annoying. So I'm gonna turn that off. What about if this is selected and set to uh, a different value? So maybe we've got this one, this option here. This is something I've set up earlier. One thirty second with a little bit of swing on it. And you can notice you get this in the different grid lines here. Click on it and press delete. I've also got the tools that are available in other MIDI editors. I can mute parts mute events. I can grab them all together and mute them. 
Let's undo that. One really nice feature though is you can actually click on, if I move this window over here a little bit, this little slider, you've got this mute area and I can mute individual elements of that drum programming. Let's put a hi-hat in there. I'm going to just press Alt and get to bring the drum programmer up. That's more shakery really, isn't it? Let's try this hi-hat. We can combine it with those other elements as well. And let's just put those points in here. Let's mute that one, that shakery type sound. And let's go back to this hat. Let's select it there and then we'll see these velocity values. I can edit them individually to get a little bit more of an interesting groove going. Or I can select, I'm holding the shift key down and I keep pressing and I'm selecting, so I'm choosing them whilst holding the shift key down. And then what I'm going to do is go into this little velocity value box up here and I'm going to drag it down and you can see how it moves only those ones that are selected down. And I can do the same thing maybe for these middle hi-hats here. Select those, drag that down. And I'm getting a more interesting kind of groove going on. So I'm not doing any quantizing, I'm not changing the timing of anything. I'm just actually manipulating the velocities to get that slight, it feels like more of a kind of shuffly feel. Now of course I can combine that then with a bit of quantize, I select those and let's try it with the quantize panel. I'll click on that little E next to the quantize. I've got the quantize panel here. I press auto so it'll automatically quantize whatever I have whatever I program in, where I change here and I'm adding a bit of shuffle. You can see the values, you can see them changing slightly. Now, of course, this is still set to snap to the 16th. But if I click on that, you'll notice now that it's actually created a new quantize preset based on what I've just added in that panel, which is quite useful. So now I can actually start programming in some of those and do some interesting things. Anything I add in there will actually conform to that grid. But let's just put it back to the 16th for the time being. Maybe let's do it on a 16th with a swing like that. Let's unmute this one. What else can we add? Now here we have things like chords and other things. So the Cubase kits will include, a lot of them include, obviously will include predominantly drum sounds, but they can include other samples as well. So this is a kind of house based one. So you get a chord hit uh, and other kinds of things, which is, of, where are we? So the crash here, the Juno hit which we can program in as well. Perhaps not so useful if you're getting, creating the other musical elements in the track from scratch or doing it yourself. There are a whole load of other aspects to the drum program in terms of things that you can actually set it to do so you can remap the notes and other kinds of things, the channel. You can even set it to send to different places so it can actually send to different outputs. But we'll leave that because actually I just want to show you really the, the, the main reason why you would use it as opposed to using the key editor. So we've got this programmed up, but let's look at what happens when we take that and we go into the key editor. Now you'll notice already we've got these quite, this, this doesn't look like drums program there, it looks more like a conventional set of notes. If we go into the key editor, you'll see that actually what you've got is you've got a whole load of a bunch of these sort of quite sort of um, these events, which are sort of a, almost a sort of a 16th long. And as before, 
as I mentioned before, the drum editor is really nice because you can actually see the velocities individually. This one, they're all grouped together. So if I select those notes, or if I do anything to do with velocity, it will start actually, it will control all of those at the same time. And you can see how the timing, dealing with some multiple subtle timing differences can be quite tricky. Of course, if I select just the kick drum, I can then do some velocity changes there. You can see how that's moving up and down. So I can manipulate that, but I have to select that particular sound. And equally, I could do it for the hi-hats but it gets a little bit fiddly. So really you can see where the power of the drum editor comes in. It allows you to just forget about note lengths or anything like that and just to really focus on actually programming those drums in a nice consistent way. So in this video we looked at drum programming and we looked at programming drums using the mouse predominantly and seeing as a really valid alternative to actually playing sounds in. We looked at the various tools that are specific to the drum editor, things like muting and the selection, actually be able to see velocity individually, really useful features and something you should really explore if you're looking to program your drums in a little bit more detail.